So, so the purpose of life is joy, and then that it, it serves as your guidance system, really, is the joy part, and not exactly. what yeah. other people believe in the love that you should display or what they think you should display. When, when the the basis of life is freedom. You, you can't get around it. You're, you're so free. You can choose bondage. You can think any thought that you want. All focused consciousness can choose the thought that they focus upon. So you are, you, the basis is freedom to choose. The result of life is expansion. You just can't get around that. We are all expanding. But if your, if your dominant quest is to feel good, if your quest is for joy, then you catch up with your expansion in order to find it. And so we can't separate the freedom that you have to focus from the, the joy that you must focus upon in order to catch up with the expansion that you've achieved. We can't separate one from the other. It's such a triad of intentions that is so integral one piece to the other, you see. So if someone says, what's your purpose in life? We would say, inevitable, joyous expansion. And then they might say, question, and it would be right for them to do it. Well, if it's inevitable, why is it your quest? And you say, oh, well, it was my quest when I came. In other words, it's, it, it is my eternal quest, this joyous expansion. And, and we're here to add a caveat to that. And that is expansion is inevitable. The joy part is optional. <laughs> Eternal vacation. <laughs> uh, can we in non-physical project into multiple physical beings at the same time? Yes. And, and in order to accurately explain that, we touched on it a little bit earlier that as you stand in your physical body, you have an inner being, but your inner being is not singular because your inner being is merged as a cooperative component with others. And so you would be very hard pressed to separate your inner being from Esther's, for example, or from that, which is Abraham. You just, you'd have a hard time separating. So it right out. now I'm talking to myself in essence, okay. in essence. So as are we yeah. so co-creation so it is co-creation so when you when you realize that that vibrationally speaking you can't separate those clumps out in other words you are you think you're contained because you are clumps on chairs and so and a lot of people want there to be clumps on clouds that are corresponding to the clumps on chairs but but vibrationally speaking it is not that way it's a stream of consciousness so when you tap in to the energy of of that which is you you tap into that much bigger energy you see yes so I could meet myself on the street one day. Would I recognize myself? Well, you know, every person on the planet is your soulmate in that sense. Because at the heart of everyone who's walking around is the same source energy that is at the heart of that which is you. But let's put soulmate into its most accurate context. When you're looking for a soulmate, you're really wanting to align with the soul that is you. In other words, if we were standing in your physical shoes, we'd be working to align with who we really are and then trust that law of attraction will bring you other physical individuals, interesting word, individuals who are also collectively aligned with who they are. And that makes for the best of relationships. Do you have relationships that way in non-physical where based on your focus so if you're non-physical that, you're that's exactly what we have yes okay. intention intention so so we are we are gathered with this collective consciousness that is profoundly interested and involved in finding ways of expressing to you anything that you are asking about what's going on for you here on planet earth in other words that's that's what you've summoned and that's who we are but it does not mean that we don't have access to more than that because like you we are infinite in intelligence so based on the question i ask it summons different precisely entities. that's who gathers that's who gathers and the clarity of your question brings forth the clarity of the answer 
Yeah. That's why we wanted you to be real time with us as we were having the conversation because you were taking us to places that we had not been before and we wanted you to come with us. <laughs> uh, one other question about hauntings. Uh, people talk about sometimes they'll come into a room and things are misplaced or moved around and, and they attribute it to hauntings. Is, are there... Most of it we attribute to bad memory. <laughs> <laughs> and, to, and to the cooperative universe that, will, that always assists you. In other words, when you decide that something is lost, you can't find it even though it's right there. And then when you get back into the vibration that allows you to see it, then you're sure that someone has brought it in and put it there. There's more of that going on than anything. But in fairness, everything is vibrational and everything that you see in this physical world is an extension of that vibration. And so this non-physical energy that is focused does have the ability to right before your eyes move things because everything is vibrational. So hauntings, give us an example. Uh, Esther always this... tells Jerry that she will haunt him. <laughs> And he always tells her, you already do. <laughs> this is more of my friend's question, so I don't have a specific instance. Of course, we've seen things on well, television. Well, here is, here's the most um, common Is that, is that part e of our example. creation? For example, if somebody goes out to look for hauntings, they'll find them because they're creating... Well, here's the thing. Every, everything is about vibration and vibration is being interpreted in many different ways we've already talked about the real life reality that you want to call reality which is your interpretation of vibration your eyes interpret vibration and that's why you see your ears interpret vibration and that's why you hear and so you are interpreting energy into what you see Esther, as she is receiving us here, is receiving blocks of thought. We are sort of downloading big blocks of thought. She gets them at an unconscious level, sorts them out and finds word equivalent to best describe the block of thought that she's receiving. So Esther is a very good verbal translator of this vibration. But there are others who are visual translators of vibration and they are those who have visions who see things and and many of you do too the thing that is important to understand whether you are verbally translating Esther is more auditory than visual whether you are verbally translating or whether you are visually translating or both in any case you are receiving the vibration that you you must be somewhere in the vibrational vicinity of the vibration in order to interpret it in other words Esther has discovered that if she meditates or if she's joyful or if she's basking that she's much more up to speed with what Abraham is and so the flow of Abraham is much more comfortable and much more uh, emphatic or precise or beneficial if she's up to speed with us so so interpreting energy simply means being in the vibrational vicinity and then interpreting in some way visually or auditorily so now let's talk about vibration other than the vibration that we are offering in other words we are a, a a stream of consciousness and when Esther or any of you get in the vicinity of what we are you have that knowing in other words we've been talking about that all day here today you are knowing what we are talking about and surprising yourself aren't you in other words you're right up to speed do you hear how you laugh just at the right moment do you hear how you're getting the subtle nuances of what we are offering you're up to speed with us or that would not be happening so you're in the vibrational vicinity of that which we are now Esther makes it easier for you because she's speaking it out loud and you are commonly or collectively focused which makes it easier still but just the same you are in the vibrational vicinity or you would not be getting it so Every thought that has ever been thought still exists. Thoughts don't go away. Vibrations don't go away. And law of attraction gathers those vibrations into what you might call rivers or streams. And so you could pick up on a river. This is a powerful stream of consciousness that we are projecting here, which is easy for Esther and some of you to pick up on. 
but there are streams of consciousness that are the spin-off of man's conscious thought that are also easy for you to pick up on if you're in the vibrational vicinity so that's where all that evil haunting stuff comes from that's in other words as man worries about this and worries about that as you watch Steven Spielberg movies or Stephen King's movies as you as you watch that stuff there's a coalescing of all of that and it is perfectly logical that someone in the vibrational vicinity of some of that unwanted stuff could be close enough to the vibration of it that they could begin to interpret it visually Jerry and Esther, one of the very first people that they met as they began to do this work, a wonderful woman who lived in Dallas. And Jerry and Esther stayed at her home, in fact, when they went up to do the seminars. She heard them on one of the few radio shows that they ever did or that we ever did and came to the first seminar that they conducted in Dallas. And she told them the story later when she became a good friend of theirs that as she was driving to the seminar, after having heard us on the radio she is saying right out loud as she is driving in her automobile all right Abraham are you angel or devil which sort of gives you an idea of what was going on with her at the time she did not understand what we that when we emphatically say there is no source of evil there's just allowing who you really are or not but she was still in that place where she was looking for good and evil hauntings and and blessings sort of thing and so as we were uh, coming into the conversation Esther was sitting at the time not standing and uh, she asked the question as she was sitting there in the room and as we uh, came to join the party in Esther's experience we were silent for an inordinate amount of time in fact Esther began to feel uncomfortable because she was used to us opening her eyes and getting right to it but instead we opened her eyes and looked at this woman and the woman said the entire room field filled with big angel wings oh. now we projected to her an answer to her question and in her ability to translate vibration visually she did so it's in the eye of the beholder in other words you see what you are vibrationally tuned to but more important you see what you are expecting an expectation is a vibrational practice and anything is possible we just want you to know that there is only a source of well-being and that this source of well-being is dominant and if you're picking up on any of that other stuff it's just because you're outside the vortex on the raw and ragged edge you got a pretty good vibration going and all that stuff's floating around out there congealing and able to pick up in other words transmitting and receiving mechanisms it's all that it is